Well, good morning again to everybody. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord today. And never thought we'd have a problem with too many people. But we don't have too many people, just not enough pews for today's world. But anyway, we'll survive. We just pray a blessing on each and every person here, person that is here, and pray God's strength and God's hand upon you to keep each and every person here safe and bless them for coming to hear the word of God. Which pair of shoes did you wear? Did you pick out a closet to wear this morning? Your black ones, your brown ones? Now, wait a minute now. We're not women. <laughs> you comb your hair to the left or the right. How many times did you change clothes before you decided which part of the pair or whatever to wear? No, yeah, we're not all women. <laughs> anyway. Some of us have the privilege of we go to the closet and there's a hanger and say, this is what you're wearing today. <laughs> but because of bad decisions that we've made before, <laughs> probably. But how many decisions have you made this morning? How many decisions have you made this past week? How many decisions have you made in your lifetime? Think about that. Now, think about the consequences or results of those decisions. You still remember any of them? Some of them are kind of horrifying to think about. <laughs> Do you ever wish you'd made a different decision? Well, there's, there's some that I have a lot of decisions we make have very little value, don't they? You know, the first one I thought of was what, what we watch on TV, but that has a lot of value sometimes. You know, if we go hunting, we're going on this ridge or that ridge. You know, it still has consequences, don't it? You know, if you go to a restaurant when they was open and you got what they call it, the buffet, I call it a buffet, she said the buffet. <laughs> Depends on if you spell it like to say it or say you like to spell it. But anyway, you got choices, don't you? You got choices of good food, better food, and bad food. The person behind you chooses different things because they make different decisions. But some of these things have very little value in our lives, but other things, decisions we make, have a lot of value, don't they? They have a lot of consequences that make a lot of difference in your life. You know, there's some things like what kind of car are you going to buy? You know, if I if I don't buy nothing but Chevrolets, like some people, if I don't buy nothing but Fords, like some people. But, you know, what if we all chose the same one? Now, I've said this before, we'd all be married to blondes and drive Fords, but probably not. But anyway, the decisions that you make in your life means a whole bunch. <coughs> the Bible tells stories of people that make decisions. Turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 3, if you will. Eve made a choice to listen to the serpent and eat of the tree of life and gave some to her husband. We all know that story, don't we? Probably heard it many times. But what happened? You think that little things that you do, probably eating an apple off of a tree today is not going to hurt you that bad unless the farmer sprayed it, or unless the farmer standing there with a shotgun and tell you not to steal his apple. But I don't know if it was an apple, a pear, or peach, said fruit. But anyway, Genesis chapter 3, if you start about verse 13, and it's, the Lord is talking to Eve, said, The Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat it. Well, stop right there. There's a lot in that one verse. Then the Lord asked the woman, ask Eve, what, what, is, what did you do? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me. 
what do we do in life? Remember when you was a kid? Remember when your husband or your wife or boyfriend or whoever said, "Why? What did you do anyway? Why did you do this?" Yeah, first, yeah, that's where they get that maybe. But do we do we always take the credit for ourselves? Do we make a bad decision? No. We what? Usually blame it on somebody else, don't we? Usually blame it on somebody else. That's just a, just a thing to do. Yeah, my sister's sitting there like, yeah, it was always Roger's fault. <laughs> but And the Lord said to the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. In other words, God's punishing the serpent. Thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. So did he punish the woman? Was there consequences to that decision she made? You think she was thinking about this when the serpent was talking to her and saying, hey, God told you not to eat this, but don't it look good? I bet that's sweet. Probably just one wouldn't hurt nothing. He told you you'll die if you eat that stuff. You ain't gonna die if you eat that stuff. Is the world the same today? Is the commercials on TV in any comparison to that serpent? Is the billboards along the road in any comparison to that? Is the world itself any comparison to that? It don't matter what God says. It don't matter what God's word says. Do it anyway. We do. We ain't did yet. Yet. We ain't hell yet. There's a lot of yets to these things. Guarantee you there's a thing a person me and Josh was talking about here the other day. It was a person to see if they could live off of Big Mike's or something like that for like three months, if that's the only food that they ate. What do you think happened to them? Think they got skinny? Think their cholesterol went down? I don't believe it works that way. There's consequences and results to the decisions that we make in life. And in this garden, there was a decision made in the Garden of Eden that affected not just Eve and not just Adam, but what happened here? They committed the first sin, didn't they? They committed the first sin, and who's still dealing with the consequences of that today? We are. Exactly. We are. What do we teach our children? You know, if we taught in a Sunday school class why people are hateful, why people hold grudges, why people act the way they do. You was taught that as a child. If your mom and dad did it and your family did it, how was you brought up to act? You were brought up the same way. There's consequences not only to sins but actions. And we need to remember that as people. Because you're, you're, you're preaching to somebody every day of your life, whether it's that little girl there or that little boy there. You're an example. And we got to remember that. And if we sin, they think it's okay if they don't. You know, Adam, what did he do? Eve had an excuse, a serpent, the God being. Boy, you know, Adam, he was kind of like Solomon on down the road there. One of these women's why I failed. He blamed it on her. My wife gave it to me. But anyway, to get on down here, and to Adam, he said in verse 17, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. In other words, is God saying we ain't supposed to listen to our women or not? I don't know. Because, because thou hast hearkened, hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. The, what he's saying there is, I don't care what she said. I, God, God saying, I told you not to do that. How many times in this world today 
If we got the Holy Spirit in us and we're a Christian person, how many times when we go to do something, does that little voice in us say, hey, that is wrong. You know that. That is wrong. But we go to do it anyway. That's what God was saying to Adam here. I told you not to eat of the tree of life. Not to eat the fruit of the tree of life. And you did it. But, did he have a good excuse? He hearkened unto the voice of his wife and hath eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. The word God said, I told you not to do that. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In other words, he's telling Adam, you're going to suffer for this. You and your kind is going to suffer for this. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return into the ground. For out of it was taken, for dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of living. And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. And the Lord said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now let he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. You know, God punished these two people. He punished these two people for the sin that they committed because they did not listen to him. People talk today about a God-fearing generation. That is no more. People don't fear God because they can't see what he's doing. They can't see the consequences of the sins of the United States of America and the world today. They're not recognizing the consequences of sin. Read your Bible, people. The Bible tells us many, many times that when people sin, God punished them. Is he a different God today? He ain't a different God. Are we different people today? Yeah, but we're still God's people. We're still God's children. And it says God will discipline those that he loves. And he will. And he does. And we wonder why. Why is all this happening, that happening, the other happening? Why is it? Why did this happen to them? But from this day on, we were born sinners. That's what it amounted to. But so therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground which he was taken. And so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every which way to keep the way of the tree of life. In other words, he was guarding that tree with him. People says God made Adam and Eve. How did how was there so many people just from them two people? Well, you gotta think a little bit. He done punished them and drove them out of the garden. Who was he keeping the tree from? The rabbits? He was keeping the tree from the rest of the people. My sin, maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, this is the story that just read you about sin. The first sin that was committed in the Garden of Eden by Eve and Adam. And the consequences of that. The consequences of that sin was that we were born sinners and we was always going to be sinners. We didn't have any hope. That was a story about one garden. What happened in another garden, a decision that was made that should give us hope? You ever think of that? Turn to Luke, I believe it is. No, Mark. Turn to Mark, chapter 14. He was right next to Luke. Mark, chapter 14. It tells a story there about a man that made a decision that gives us hope. Mark chapter 14, 
verse 32. This is after the Last Supper. This is after they went out the night, Jesus and his disciples. This is right before that Jesus knew that he was going to be taken captive and he was going to go to the cross and be crucified. He already told the people this. But it says in verse 32, And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. Or in other words, he's distressed or troubled. Why do you think Jesus was that way? He had, you know who Jesus was? Jesus was the Son of God. The song that we sang. You ever hear the song, he could have called 10,000 angels? He could have. Jesus was God. Jesus is God. He could have saved himself. But the decision that Jesus made that night, which we'll read about, is the only hope in what gave us hope as Christian people. Without that, we'd be back to the days of Adam and Eve. We'd be back to the priest sacrificing for our sins. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. And he said, sit your while I shall pray. And he took John and James and Peter, and he said unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And you Excuse me. And he went forth a little while and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Now take that into consideration what Jesus said. You know, did you ever get in such a bad way in life that you just prayed that anything but this? Just let me wake up and this be a dream. Just let me be somewhere else. Let this be another time. You know, Jesus knew. He had seen people crucified. He'd seen people tortured. He'd seen how the Romans handled people. And knowing that he was going to go through that, do you think you'd be troubled? I would. But the decision he made, people, is a decision... That knowing that I'd be here preaching today, the word of God would be laying here on this pulpit, and that you would be sitting in church and trusting in the Son of God and Jesus Christ, that there is hope. We do have hope, people. We have hope, we have hope for salvation, everlasting life. That says, Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. An example is later on here the thief on the cross beside of him did just that. And he said, Today you shall be with me in prayer. Are we too prideful? Are we too unbelieving? Are we too whatever else to believe that Jesus Christ made the decision to suffer and be tortured and die on the cross just for us? Just for us. It said that he died not for the sins of the people just then, but the sins of the people of the sins to come. And that's us. He didn't die just for the Jews. He died for the Gentiles also. That's us. The other people. But do we ever, do we see that? And he went forward a little while and fell on the ground and prayed. If it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, he's talking to God, talking to the Father. Abba, Father, all these things are possible unto thee. In other words, God, I know this is possible for you, but take away this cup from me. In other words, what was he deciding? You think he was scared? I would be. You think that he had, he had preached for, what, three years or so, healed people and did all that, forgiven people, but yet, when kind of like going to the dentist to have three teeth pulled, 
you know, two weeks before that ain't too bad. But the day before that, you get nervous, don't you? Is that going to hurt really bad? The hour before that, you're really, really nervous. You wish the car would break down, the dentist called and canceled an appointment, something, so you didn't have to go. But think of getting, you know, like I said, Jesus knew what was going to happen to him. To get nailed to a piece of wood and sat in the ground and suffer for hours and hours and hours. But his father, read John 3 16, says he gave his only begotten son. Those that for those that believed in him shall be saved and not perish. And Jesus was that only begotten son and suffered and died for us. And here he made the decision to take this cup away from me, but the most helpful words to me that's written here. It says, nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. In other words, Jesus said, no matter what I think, your will be done, Father. You know, don't matter what I will, but what you will. And different, if you read different ones in different books, it's worded a little different way. It says, not my will, but your will be done. One of them. But do we, do we act that way to God? Do we believe that? Do we say not what Roger wants, but what you want, God? That's what I want. When we make a decision in life, do we remember what Jesus Christ did for us. When we make a decision in life to do something that's questionable, and that little voice in us, the Holy Spirit, says, Roger, you know that's wrong. Or that could be wrong. Or that could be saw as wrong. Do we still do it? Or do we go back in our minds and remember what Jesus Christ did for us? You know, there's two gardens there we're talking about. The Garden of Eden where sin was sin. The first sin was committed. When Eve listened to the serpent and Adam listened to Eve. And there was consequences. Well, I'll tell you what. At the Garden of Gethsemane, there was consequences for what Jesus did, the decision he made. And them consequences... Is as I said, the only hope that you and I have this day. You know, we can read our Bible, we can come to church and sit here in the pews, but without the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ said after he was crucified and he ascended into heaven, I will not leave you alone, is what he told the disciples and apostles. He said, But I'll send you the comforter, the Holy Spirit. And he did. Without that, we can't get through this world. You know, with all the craziness and chaos that's going on in the world today, without the Holy Spirit, can we make the right decision? You know, which influences us most? Our Bible laying at home on the shelf or our cell phone on our side with all the pleasures of the world right there at our fingertips? You know, it's like going through this buffet at the big restaurants which satisfies you most the food is good for you the food is not much good for you i mean your body in the same way as the world today temporary pleasures in the world today satisfies for a minute don't they maybe 25 minutes maybe half hour maybe a day maybe a week but What's the consequences of that going to be? You know, think back and read your Bible, people. Read the Bible of all the consequences of what happened to the people that followed God. The, what happened to the people that did not follow God? You know, we talked of Solomon, the wisest man in the Bible. Asked God for wisdom. He gave him wisdom, gave him riches, gave him all kinds of things. But yet, he did not make good decisions. And he knew, as I preached on a Sunday, he knew what God wanted. 
but he knew what Solomon wanted to do. And he followed his worldly pleasures and worldly desires. Was there consequences? Yeah. So in the end, he turned away from God. What did Joshua say? What was it? Joshua chapter 24, verse 15? We need to make that decision. Joshua was talking to the Israelites and told them they was off on one of their downs instead of ups following God. And Joshua talked to them and talked to them. And he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And you should do that too. What happened? You can keep going with all this. What happened when the Israelites, when Moses went up on the mountain for the Ten Commandments, and he come back down? They had thought something eating, thought he died up there, whatever else he was gone, 40 days or more. He come back down and they had created a golden calf to worship. That's a decision they made. What happened then? He chopped it up and made a meal, didn't he? You don't believe that read the Bible. Anyway. But he had Moses and Aaron stood over here and the other people over here. He said, those that want to be with me make a decision to come over here. And they did. What happened to the others? The earth opened up and swallowed them. After the good people went through and killed a bunch of the bad people. But the decisions we make in life we make, and I'm speaking from experience. The bad decisions I have made in life always has consequences. As the decisions Adam and Eve made, and as praise the Lord, the decision that Jesus Christ made to go to the cross, to carry on with what his Father, God, wanted him to do, to go to the cross and die for the sins of Roger Sager and of everybody else sitting in this room today. And give us a chance at salvation. To give us hope. To give us something to look forward to. You know, we think this is bad, this pandemic, pandemic, whatever you call it, the virus deal. Read your Bible and revelations of what's going to happen. This ain't bad yet. Like I said on the movie, it's coming. You know, if, if we and uh, a guy was talking the other day about the rapture. When is it going to happen? I don't know. We talk about the mark of the beast. That's things mentioned in the book of Revelation. You know, are we going to be dumb enough to get the mark of the beast? Are we going to follow the Antichrist? What is the Antichrist? We'll preach on that in a Sunday or two. But, you know, what, what if we make a decision, it says in the end that even the elect will be deceived if the times are not shortened. What decisions are Christian people making today? The right ones or the wrong ones? Are they making the decision to be witnesses? We talked about the two witnesses. Even in the tribulation, there are two witnesses that preach and preach and preach to the people. The people that have been left behind. The people that reject God. Even with all the terrible uh, things that he does to man, in the tribulation, it says people seek death and can't find it. People run into the caves in the mountain and curse God because they don't trust him. All they had to do, and you think back in your life, all that Gene talked this morning about almost. I was almost converted. King Agrippa, that's who it was. He was almost converted by Paul. Was you almost converted? Did you almost give your life to Jesus Christ? Almost don't count. It ain't hand grenades, it ain't horseshoes. This is heaven and hell we're talking about. You know, almost don't count with God. You either know him or you don't. So if you haven't yet in your life, make a decision today to go home, get down on your knees, pray every day, every morning, every evening. Read your Bible, read the Word of God. And give your life completely to Jesus Christ. That's a decision. You can make all kinds of decisions in life. You know, which football game you want to watch, which chocolate pie or apple pie or cherry pie you want to eat, whether you want to drive a Porsche or a Chevrolet, whether you want to marry a blonde or brunette, 
All that ain't going to matter when you lay up here in front of the church in the casket. You done three days late for all that, and somebody else done inherited all that. So, what happens then? Then you end up in heaven or hell. And the decision that you make, God offered you a way out. He sent his only son to die on the cross, and Jesus made the decision to do it for you. It says right there. Not your will be done, not my will, but yours be done. That's what he says. But you need to make a decision today to follow Jesus Christ and give your heart to him if you have not. And as far as going to say, that's all we've got to say about that today. Yeah. Want well, to join me in a prayer? Lord, we pray that you give us enough good sense to read your word, to listen to the Holy Spirit in our heart, that small, still voice, and turn our lives completely to you. Lord, let us get over, get around the things of the world, and let us turn to you for all the answers, and let us remember what you've done for us to give your only begotten Son. And Lord, let the decisions we make be influenced by you and be to your honor and for your glory. Through Christ we pray. Amen.